away we go. All right, we are back from break, and today we are joined by not one but two very special guests. One is a friend of the show, longtime friend of the show, Brian Preston. Say hello. Hey, what's up, guys? And the other is new friend of the show, Violet Gray. Please say hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, both of you are uh, stand-up comedians of note in the Baltimore area amongst the scene. Uh, right now, doing most of your, your laugh finding <laughs> virtually. How is that going? Um, you know what? It's honestly, it was a little weird at first, uh, for, but I think we've really gotten into a groove of doing it like online. It is, uh, I think, so much fucking easier to do it this way because we used to like all meet up on Tuesday nights at McGooby's Joke House and <laughs> Lamers Cockeysville, Maryland at about uh, 7 o'clock uh, every two weeks and do it there. But now we just do it at our homes on our laptops. So uh, oh, for me, yeah. that's been a lot easier. Uh, it's probably also a lot healthier because we would get buffalo wings and mm -hmm. barbecue burgers every Tuesday on the dot. And well, you have that two, you have that two drink minimum or one item of food minimum at right. Magoonies. <laughs> yeah. So, but we're doing it on the Roll Twenty system, which is basically everything you need to play D and D, but online. And so that's where we have the maps, the dice, and everything. And yeah, yeah. I, like uh, Brian said, it took a little adjusting at first, but I think we've hit our stride. Uh, funny. Sorry, Brian, go ahead. Oh, oh. I was just going to say, uh, you, you guys, my nerdery, which is, I always felt was extensive and deep, never made it to the role-playing game uh, realms, to use a word that they would use. Uh, did you guys have like people growing up that would play? None of my, my, none of my buddies would do this shit. Uh, how long have you guys been playing? Well, uh, you go ahead. Okay. Um, so for me, uh, definitely nowhere near. I think I'm probably outside of uh, our, our new ca newer cast members. Our newer outside of the newer cast members, I think I probably played the least of everyone on the show uh, comparatively. I mean, I got into it. I played a couple games with uh, Violet like um, a couple years ago, independently of the show, uh, with other stand-up comedian. That was really my first experience, like getting into like a straight up like regular tabletop campaign. I dabbled some. I had a lot of friends that were into it once I started doing comedy. But growing up, we were just always video games and shit. So yeah, yeah. For me, um, it was a challenge finding people who wanted to play D and D growing up in Northwest Baltimore, uh, Park Heights area. Oh, uh, sure. The Orthodox uh, Jews weren't into it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, neither was everyone on the other side of Park Heights. Uh, one way, one thing they had in common. But, <laughs> but um, when I hit college, uh, pretty much the only people I made friends with were role play gamers. And that wasn't from any sort of effort. They were just like, oh, this person is just as maladjusted and weird as we are. So we'd better take this person under our wing. And <laughs> And I sort of got into it from there. So I would say I've been playing tabletop RPGs roughly. You don't have to age yourself if you don't want to. Yeah, there you go. You did that anyway. <laughs> uh, do you guys like do voices and stuff? Like, you know, here I am to firebomb this dragon. Well, Brian uh, you, mm -hmm. actually has uh, been semi-famous for his, uh, his character Sobek Fun Murder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, last season we did Starfinder, uh, sci-fi game that's we're back on Pathfinder two this season. But last season I did uh, in the last season, which seemed like it was like a two-year-long season, Violet, if I'm not mistaken. It was a very long campaign. But my character Sobek Fun Murder is pretty much a race of lizard people, and I was uh, this this lizard piece of person, mercenary lizard person's races, Owen Wilson. So I just tried to do an Owen Wilson impression every. It wasn't I'd be like, oh wow, I just would say that <laughs> all the fucking time. And so I did that on that one. But yeah, we do other character voices and shit. Uh, we do do the voices full role play. Uh, Violet does a whole lot of voices on it. Yeah, I do a whole lot of voices. Uh, do you guys ever do like one of the Star Wars ones or anything, or nope. do you stay with now? It's all it's all Starfinder D and D. Pathfinder stuff. Yeah, Pathfinder and Starfinder so far. Um, I'm currently developing my own tabletop role playing game. Mm, so cool. eventually we will we'll want to do an episode of that, I think. But so far. Can you tell us about that or is that absolutely? Not yet? Um, oh yeah, tell us about that. 
It's called the Wheel of Ishu, uh, Ishu being the Yoruba deity of trickery and travel. And so uh, it's a fantasy reim reimagining of the African continent, but with this swirling current, this whirlpool-like swirling current of magic above it that some people can ride and travel thousands of miles in maybe an hour. That's and so awesome. the whole concept behind the game was, what if you took a continent like Africa and you excelled one aspect of life in some major way, like relative light speed travel? How would that affect the economy? How would that affect the culture? Um, how would that affect the demographic? Because everyone can trade different cultural influences and be in different places in the blink of an eye. So, so instead of just one meteorite of vibranium landing in your country, you have, not, you have a continent-wide uh, right, right. Uh, uh, method of, you know, a continent-wide resource. Yes, and also it's a deck-building tabletop role-playing game. So you play with dice and you also play with cards that you and the other players can trade because some cards are better for some classes. And as you go up in level, you get to edit the deck. So as you go up in level, you're literally stacking the deck in your favor. That's awesome. Yeah, that's fun. Are, are, are there... So if only because the game is pretty afrocentric it sounds like mm -hmm. are there I, I was just reading about how wizards of the coast is going back and revising a lot of the uh races in dungeons and dragons to make them uh a little bit more palatable i, I don't know for uh are, are there many are there many tabletop uh opportunities for like that kind of Afrocentrism, because there's a big, there, there's a big, you know, sci-fi and fantasy uh, literature aspect. D does that follow through with tabletop gaming? Um, the answer was no until very, very recently. So um, I remember I saw one African setting game called Ayambe, and that never really took off. And it's like. 25 years old by now, but um, just very recently in the past five years, um, you, you're seeing more, like I wrote my first ever content for the Pathfinder role-playing game and they were purposefully seeking out uh, minority content creators for that. Um, the sci-fi writer N.K. Jemison. Sure. Um, her setting that her books, the, the Obelisk Gate, the fifth season books, uh, they're about to get a role play gaming setting. And so, yeah, yeah, it's, there are more opportunities for writers of color within that, but uh, that is very recent in the, in the grand scheme of things. Um, that is, I mean, that, that's really cool. I, I haven't read any of N.K. Jemison's book. I have read uh, most of her issues of Far Sector, mm -hmm. which is a DC Comics uh, Green Lantern story. Uh, excellent, excellent stuff. Uh, it, it's, it's funny because as I engaged on my uh, Star Trek, gigantic Star Trek novel reading, I, I found that in that, in that genre, I'm reading so many more books like by women and by women of color than I was beforehand. I, it's, it's really interesting how kind of uh, science fiction uh, fantasy is a, uh, it can be a safe space for, for those, uh, for those authors. Yeah. More so now. And even in a tabletop role-playing game, like if you open the Pathfinder second edition books, you see more people of color in general and not just humans. You see like African inspired elves and, and like South American inspired dwarf like people like. Yeah. yeah. Because you got the Andes mountains. Why right. wouldn't there be South American dwarves? You know, like right. if, if, if you think of elves as like in the lush, like forests, 
Like, couldn't there be elves on the Serengeti or something? Like, right, right. Well, it follows that if it follows that if elves travel to a tropical climate, they don't want skin cancer there either. So they right. probably evolve melanin the way that. <laughs> Um, but but yeah, if even if you open the book and the fantasy genre is no longer pretending that Europe is the only continent on the planet <laughs> anymore, and so uh, and so I have that to be thankful for. I have I feel like I have a new Broadway play to way to write and play with different ideas and stuff. So that's pretty cool. I, and and all the you know. Eurocentric fantasy tropes have been done to shit. So yeah. it, it, it's it's just cool to have all of these uh, new worlds to play in. Uh, you know, I, how many more times am I supposed to hear about fucking Thor? Right. Kill me. I tell you what, I had to do research for of African myths for my game. And some of the African monsters are wild. Uh, there's a creature that has metal hooks where its hands and feet should be. Uh huh. Uh huh. And it sits in a tree and waits for someone to walk by, and then it swings down like a hinge to cut them with its sickle hands. Good. Drink their blood. I was like, why haven't we seen this before? Um, that would be. I mean, like you can already. I can already imagine like the tales from the crypt. You know. Uh, right. Right. It's like that'd be like four Candyman's. Yes. <laughs> Quandy, qu- qu- no, I can't do it. Quandy. If you if you see, say Candyman twelve times, you get right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you sit there and say it twelve times, you deserve the death mm. that's coming to you. Well, you say it three times, and one hook shows up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Meanwhile, now you can get it like a Tony Todd ca- cameo for like fifty bucks. You know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're having fun with it. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, now tell us about this TV show, this streaming show. Okay. Um, I'm with, excited. Uh, the new one. Okay. Yeah. So it's actually uh, about, and Evan, you, you've actually met the, the man behind this. Uh, before. If you remember, uh, when we were in college, uh, that one time we went over to my friend's house and we ordered strippers that never <laughs> showed up. Now, uh, he we don't I, know that they never showed up. We we went to bed. <laughs> yeah, we all went to bed. Who knows what the strippers did? Anyway, we, we've still been friends this whole time. So one day we're over in his uh, kitchen, and he does a lot of film TV stuff. And he was like, uh, hey, Brian, why don't we just shoot a comedy show in our studio? Uh, and you host it. I was like, well, geez, Steve, that's a great idea. And that was literally... <laughs> The, that was really the entire creative process for the show. Uh, so the Harbourcraft Studio uh, in the old Cork and Seal factory over in like that. I'm not even sure what area of the city that is. Uh, it's a creepy ass studio space. Uh, yeah, it looks kind of like a Jason this. Statham fight scene. Mm-hmm. It's like when you show up there, you think you're going to die. Uh, I thought the outside was the uh, diner from Grindhouse from Planet mm-hmm. Terror. Nope. That's, that's, that's what I <laughs> yeah. thought of. It's definitely that kind of vibe. I think we're going to just be shooting them in weird places just because we can't be doing uh, any more inside shows for the foreseeable future. But it's pretty much, uh, you know, it's like uh, I got myself, Violet, uh, Tommy, uh, Sambazo, Eric Woodworth from the Life Finder podcast, as well as uh, Beth Hayden and Candace Saunders on there as well. Uh, just. I think it's going to, you know what, it's got some really great production on it. The comics are all fucking fantastic on the episode. I think it's going to get some, like, different eyes on the city. I do think we have, like, a very diverse, vibrant, and unique comedy scene here. But I also don't think that, like, you know, at times, it just, it's hard to get eyes on it. So I'm excited for that. Uh, I think everyone on the show is fantastic. It's going to look great. People are really going to dig it, I think. Um, So, yeah, it's just an exciting thing. It was a real privilege to just get everyone out on there. For Jazz, we're also going to be doing a, uh, like, a sort of live game show component for it as well in between the weeks when we're releasing the pre-taped episodes, and then we're going to probably do another taping in a couple months, and we're going to try and, you know, just turn it into a thing. Cool. Cool. Um, I've been seeing a lot of uh, public access uh, kind of um, TV on Baltimore lately. There's, like, we have a Baltimore Pawn Stars or something. Uh, no, no reason we, you couldn't okay. get this on like Sundays at six thirty on Channel Eleven. Yeah, should right? be should be known that the uh, one of the guys from Charm TV um, is going to be a guest on this podcast in the next few. Oh, okay, and I, I have always thought that you know what we're doing here, and now that we're doing video and this and that and the other, like 
I never wanted to be like on a morning zoo type. I just, I was so comfortable with always just being cable access guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it's entirely possible. And uh, I have to say though, that trailer, like the videography was really. Oh yeah, no, it's like, these guys are all, uh, they're, they're all fucking pros on it. I mean, they're a lot of production. A lot of people called in a lot of favors on it. Uh, the team on it was just fantastic. I mean, these are all like you know, industry professional motherfuckers just get in there. And I think it's also rare to see like stand up comedy shot this well uh right. just on about because like even like you watch like the fucking uh, if you ever watch the old fucking uh gotham live show on like access tv you know, that's what a natural club that show uh frankly yeah, looks like dog shit so <laughs> like just the production on cell it. phone yeah like a lot of the stuff i don't think like you really don't and even like i mean it looks i mean it looks great it's really well done i think a lot of people are gonna be kind of blown away when they actually see the whole thing uh and i think it's gonna be a great opportunity to just get some eyes on a lot of really talented people that i don't think like it you know it's, i think it's short shrift on a lot of stuff so I'm excited about it. I think everyone working on it, we're real excited about it too. I'm excited about it for you. I know. It's going to be great. Um, we're all going to just get flying Toyota Camrys after this. Just high, fancy gold plated hybrid card, economy cards, gold fiats for everybody. It's gold fiats. You, you uh, that should you, even out title of the episode. Yeah. Gold, but it's also a fiat. I think that evens out. It does. It definitely does. It's like, it's gold. It's a fiat. But it's gold. Yeah. <laughs> uh, will you be having Acura cakes at the uh, premiere party? Uh, we will be having. We will send them to each of the comedians' houses. We'll just have them individually. <laughs> yeah. We'll just get on a Zoom chat like this and we'll just eat them at each other. On eat the day. Acura cakes. Will they be full the size or just regular like little Matchbox? Acura? Oh, little, little. I mean, something like a probably not like a micro machine. But remember those uh, starting line ones or whatever from the late '80s? Look at that size. You know, nothing too gaudy. It should be starting like, starting lineup like the baseball action. Oh no, that's not, goddamn! It wasn't starting lineup. It was like around that same time they had the like the tiny ass little fucking micro machines. Them. Not micro machines. They're bigger than micro machines. They had like tiny little fucking like little RC motors in them or whatever. You could like goddamn it. This is gonna oh, bother me. Penny, I remember like, penny yeah, racers. It wasn't penny racers. What were they customizable? They were customized. You had like the decals. You had like the different. Right. I'm, I'm taking this on a tangent about some toy from like when I was nine. You're but, talking about know. creepy crawlers. I get it. <laughs> okay, move, move the show. Move the show. Free move the show. Uh, we've we've had Brian on the show. We know what, what he's like. What what can people expect from you when uh what, what, what uh, I'm not I'm not going with the toes a joke. I'm saying like, well, you know, what, what, what's where's your comedy at? Well, my comedy is uh two things. Um geek references and political observations. Excellent. Sometimes at the same time. <laughs> uh, I get into a lot of debates with stupid people online. Um, I, I got targeted by the alt-right. Fun. They oh, came dear. after me for like 24 hours and they were doing like swastika memes and Pepe the Frog and uh, because I said something and they misread it. Um, don't get me wrong. If they had read me correctly, they still would have been offended. But they misread me and they got offended and so i think um, that might be one of the most offensive things about the alt-right is that not only are they stupid they're not funny you no. know they don't they don't get jokes have you know you know that uh that change my mind meme yeah uh -huh. oh yeah, yeah the guy guy at the table with the coffee yeah. that guy is a uh conservative stand-up comic named uh, steven crowder the, oh, it's Crow uh, Louder with Crowder? Yeah, that guy. Oh. I, I thought it was the, the oh shit, I can't remember his name. He's like the men's rights guy he showed up at the Charleston. Or Charlie Kirk? No, no, no. He uh, uh, Va Vosh or something? No, he was behind Pizzagate, basically. Um, oh, that dude. Yeah, but also kind of like. Chuck E. Cheese? Yes, <laughs> Charles <laughs> Entertainment Cheese. But uh, at any rate, yeah, get back oh, to yeah. this this Crowder guy. Yeah, he's a stand-up comic, and I just watched his stand-up for the first time yesterday, and okay. What's uh, the deal with these libtards? Basically, yeah, mm. yeah, for mm. 25 minutes. <laughs> well, They want to take your flags, well, what he, are we supposed to salute? He also, right. has, he also has like a hit podcast, and that's basically his podcast for an hour and a half. It's, yeah. it's so bad. It's so cringy. Yeah. That's why I'm really happy that like Jews wrote Frasier. 
because at, le at least uh, Kelsey Grammer can be funny there. <laughs> I wonder if the, the alt-right, you know, folks who sit around, you know, at their house and ha get a good chuckle out of a show that they don't know is written by nothing but Jews. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the Jewish influence on stand-up comedy is blows the alt-right influence out of the water. Yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah. Well, all right influence. It has none. Yeah. Because they're all doing basically like Shecky Green and Henny Youngman jokes. Like, right. they, they, like it hasn't evolved from like 50s Borscht Belt shit. Yeah. <laughs> people, it, it's written by people who didn't get that Archie Bunker was a joke. Right. He, what? He's the bit. He's not the good guy. <laughs> right. He's the hero of that show. I think, I think we all understood that even when I was a child and saw reruns of that show, like he's an ignoramus and yeah. you know, maybe we all understood that. <laughs> that. No, that's true. That's true. But, but it, it kind of like, I guess it kind of loops into what's going on now that we're removing episodes of 30 rock where Jane Krakowski's character, who's clearly a moron, like, you know, dresses up as a, a Pittsburgh Steeler. Um, Lynn Swan. Sure. <laughs> what else must be Lynn Swan? Because it's a black yeah, swan. Yeah, 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 it's a black yeah. swan joke. Right. Um, I, I don't know. As far as comedy is concerned, I think we're we're kind of maybe go in a phase of a slight overreaction with some of this stuff. But I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, you know, for me, I mean, I think it's one of those things where, uh, I mean, yeah, I think it's like just, you know, societal values are changing. So as far as like people, uh, as far as what they want in their comedy, it's changing a little bit. I think some of it at times would be overreactionary on certain things. Because I mean, it is like, some i mean I, I personally was never that offended by the shit on 30 rock however it is weird when we talk about how much fucking blackface was on that show uh now that you think about it because they had to cut like four or five episodes for, for blackface uh i think some of the reaction from comedians about the whole like i oh, can't be funny but it's like you can definitely do the same shit it's just you can't do like the old rote easy shit of just like punching down i mean that's you can't really get away with that anymore as far as like you know just in a lot of spaces but also at the same time though the people that do do that uh they also do pretty well. There's spaces for all of it. I think a lot of it is just, I don't know. Well, is that a succinct uh, answer? Nope. <laughs> okay, cool. I would, I would put it down to two things. Well, we live in an age where we have so much technology and everyone can know a thing very quickly. And I think the effect that that has on comedy is that if you tell a joke and one out of every 10 people who hear it get offended now more people can hear it quickly so you're going to get more people that can be offended mm. um also i think that now that we can do things like film a set on your phone um i think that more people can find the thing that offends them <laughs> more quickly and they and that information and that cancellation can spread like rapid fire and more people can be, you know, when they say that uh, you're free to say what you want but you're not free from criticism more people will see it so more people are going to criticize and i think that i think that that's what it is that um i don't know if more people are offended than they used to be, but I know more people will know the joke in order to be offended than they used to be. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's that's a really, really interesting way to put that. I, I don't think I've heard that uh, verbalized as such. I'm still waiting for people to come for Ace Ventura. If oh, only we... oh, now that you mention it, someone has come for Ace Ventura. Okay. Do you know, uh, uh, do you know who Janet Mock is? I not, do not. Uh, La Laverne Cox. I oh. know who Laverne yeah, Cox is. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah. The day before yesterday, she put out a documentary on Netflix. Uh, Discover, the, it's called. Disclosure. The Disclosure, yeah. Yeah, and it has a whole big segment on Ace Ventura. Because Ace Ventura is uh, problematic, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> the last 10 minutes are transphobic as fuck. Yeah. 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 It's like jarring and off-putting watching it as an adult, frankly. Yeah, yeah. I think the the instant the whole dialogue started, you know, about trans rights and this and that and the other, it's like, oh yeah, that part where he, he showers because he kissed what he thought was a woman, but it's a man. And I was like, ah, oh dear. <laughs> so many phobias piled on top of each other. 
Yeah, at least two. <laughs> yeah, and Jim Carrey himself in the last five or more years has been such an outspoken critic of like the far right mm. and like he offended a bunch of guns rights activists he's uh-huh. going on about trump um and then and that's the thing once you we live in an age where once you create a problematic thing it's there <laughs> it's <laughs> I guess the only yeah. thing I can say is like I've done problematic things in my history and I, I wouldn't want them to come back at me because I know that I'm not the same person. I don't know. I can't say for Jim Carrey's sake, you know, that he's an entirely different person, but I, I certainly, he doesn't strike me as homophobic or transphobic. And also that was a character, but yeah. I don't know who wrote the script. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, 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 sucks. I will say that realistically, I don't think that there is a person who hasn't laughed at something that is poignant for someone else. Sure. I do think that, and like, I know me personally, I have a dark sense of humor, <laughs> like way darker than my jokes that I do. <laughs> I have a dark sense of humor. And I think, I do think that, that everyone who has laughed at something has laughed at something that is probably painful for someone else. Well, comedy for me is tragedy for you. you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, you fall, you fall and break a leg. That's hilarious. I fall and break a leg. That's really bad. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the. This is one of the things that really fascinates me about a movie like Blazing Saddles, which we, I just watched that two days ago. It is, um, and it's amazing how at no point in time are the racists ever anything than the butt of the joke. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, there are two good people in that movie, Sheriff Bart and, uh, the, Waco um, G- yeah. and, and the Waco Kid. Like, everybody Which else. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Waco Kid Waco. name has aged poorly. I probably, it's probably the part of the movie that has aged poorly. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Koresh. How are you? I just uh, lo- I love the sequence when uh, he shows up. You know, he's he's the new sheriff, and they're about, they're all about to shoot him, and he like holds himself hostage, and he's like, yeah. I'm "Gonna get it!" And they're all like, "Oh, Lord, no!" Except for the fact that the entire movie ends with a gigantic gay joke. It's weird. It's, That's it's true. The French yeah. mistake. Yep. It's so, so weird. You got to take your <laughs> like a huge brawl scene. Yeah. Right. Between the French mistake people and the Western people. Right. Oh, fun fact. Uh, Richard Pryor wrote all Mongo's dialogue. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, th- th- uh, they wanted Pryor to be uh, the sheriff, but they, yeah. they couldn't insure him. Right. They were like, he's too risky. And I think even Richard Pryor back then was like, yeah, I was too risky. Yeah. <laughs> As she said, and I hadn't even had an, a, a, a face explosion yet. Right, right. I, I just imagine during that time period, he would get up in the morning and snort his breakfast. Mm. <laughs> and I wonder... Whatever if, it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and then I wonder even today, could uh, the prior album with the name that we're all thinking of, could he, could he release that titled album today? What, Live from the Sunset Strip? Yep, that's yeah, the one. Yeah, okay. that's the one. Yeah, the Sunset Strip's the whole thing. That's fine. Yeah, I don't, uh, you guys are being weird. <laughs> uh, you, you know, what about the Moonrise, Brian? Uh, the Moonrise. Sure. Fair enough. Fair enough. I I don't think the the album I'm thinking of would be titled what it was yesterday no. today. Not even. Uh, not even close. Um, awesome. This was awesome. I love this. Is it over? Yeah, we're gonna let them go because we have two other guests coming on. Oh, uh, yeah. Can I do one last plug? Uh, yes, right. please. Uh, okay, so in addition to Laughematic, okay, so you know what? You can get way too much Brian Preston in your quarantine right now. So Wednesday nights, you can hear myself and Violet. Uh, we do Laugh Finder Game Night on Facebook, 8 p.m. on Wednesdays. You guys can check that out. Just be air that on Facebook Live. Uh, Sunday, you can watch Laugh Finder Live, 1 p.m. on Sundays. For the foreseeable future, you can check out Laugh Finder. Uh, on Tuesdays, I think it's gonna be Tuesday mornings. I'm not 100% certain. But I think that's we're going to be rolling out the uh, la- the post traumatic lapomatic. Uh, you can find that on YouTube on Tuesdays, and then on Monday nights I have another show that I'm doing on Twitch.tv called Absolute Terror, where uh, pretty much that show is 
Uh, I bought a PSVR headset last weekend, so it's pretty much I just eat edibles and I play terrifying games uh, on Twitch. I play terrifying VR games. People get in the chat and they help me out, uh, try to play the game. I get have very you... scared. Uh, Resident Evil 7 on VR is ridiculous. I was going to say, have you started sad. playing that? Yeah, wow. Yeah, you Resident Evil 7. you see, right? Uh, they can, yeah, it's, it's like pretty much they can see what I see on the screen. Uh, and it but can is, I also see you with a dumb headset on your face? Um, well, hopefully, I haven't gotten the part. I need like an extra part to hook my VR headset into. Hopefully, that gets here from Amazon. So, hopefully, this Monday you will be able to see me free, like just thrashing around with a headset on. Uh, yes, um, that's what I want. Yeah. Okay. I, so, hopefully, would, by next Monday you will be able to see me on the headset. Is there would, a Wario? Is there a, a was it Wario VR? What was the game? Um, uh, no, the virtual boy. Oh yeah, no, this is on PlayStation, so no, there is no. That's water. a shame, because remember that was he was the virtual boy and it was red. He was, yeah, and that was a huge failure. Yeah, I was like one of five people who had that. Oh, oh hi, Casey. You lucky guy. You lucky duck. <laughs> yeah, Casey's parents hated him, but they did buy him video games. I would love to see the inside, uh, uh, inside helmet, like a la Iron Man, <laughs> Brian's face, you know, just appearing. All, oh, uh, yeah. as a picture in picture like like, whoa, yeah. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of that it's a lot of me just freaking out as people uh come at you with a chainsaw in vr <laughs> and violet and violet what do you have anything else you'd like to plug um let's see uh we've covered laugh finder um i was on the bechdel cast oh nice uh, last two days ago. Um, that episode dropped today where we talk about trans representation and also uh, I think it's still up. I was on the Butterboy comedy show with Aparna Nancherla and Judah Friedlander and mm. other people. So uh, I have those on my way. Oh, uh, Facebook, Violet Gray, Instagram, uh, chaotic violet and twitter violet silver how long before uh after the quarantine when when they when they say it's time people can give shows when are you guys gonna start giving shows ever again are you finished um, with that <laughs> well they're already doing shows now uh i'm not doing them like indoors for the rest of the year probably we're gonna probably do some outdoor shit but like yeah i don't know let's say al fresco comedy with brian preston well uh, i saw melissa via senior from snl dragged uh, a mic and an amp out to a uh, little league uh yeah. field <laughs> um you can catch me outside when it's like not raining uh, the rest of the year probably you tell me I more know. danielle bergoli <laughs> yeah oh what a terrible rapper but um yeah uh i believe uh one of our podcast mates is headlining magoobies Yep, Tommy Simbazo this weekend. Uh, two shows, 8 o'clock Friday and Saturday. Uh, he's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And so he's headlining Magoobies. Um, people are going to slowly creep out. I just want to make it tell Halloween because Halloween this year is on a Saturday. A yeah. Moon, and we get the hour back. Oh, my God. Yeah. What, yeah. what a... Well, I'm, I've already figured out my Halloween costume for this year. I think it's a winner. We'll find out night of. Is it Danielle Bergoli? <laughs> mm. it, it, it is not the Cash Me Outside girl. How about that? <laughs> it, uh, uh, it's good. It's good. I'll tell you off air. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to really break it. But I'll, 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 I'll tell you off air. I'm very serious about these things. <laughs> It should be noted that Casey, who has been sitting in the dark this entire time, looks like the smoke monster from Lost, uh, aforementioned Lost. <sighs> we don't talk about that show anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's so perfect. I will fight you, Brian Levy. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of the competing Lost podcast? Oh, we're... Lost in the Sauce. Uh, lost in the <laughs> Sauce. Oh, lost and Lost sauce. is the boss. <laughs> yeah, Lost in the Sauce, Lost is the boss. Yeah, Lost is all... It's just me getting drunk talking about Lost. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was two pandemic phases ago. I've moved on from that. Uh, I know. It was like an entire eight weeks ago, I think. Uh, I think it was, yeah. I don't remember that episode was. Here's the Man. format. I think you do 15 minutes on an episode, then Brian does 15 minutes on the same episode telling an exact opposite uh, review and a glowing review. I like, I like the Lost... I, I like Lost as the boss where uh, we compare 
uh, Lost episodes to Who's the Boss episodes. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Or Tony I mean, Danza um, the episode. <laughs> When you think about it, in many ways, Angela is the smoke monster. Now, Ooh. isn't Mona the smoke monster because she smokes a lot? No, uh, Mona's well, Hurley. She's a smoke show. Oh. <laughs> I remember that episode that he accidentally saw her naked, mm-hmm. and the Ooh, whole show. Sawyer, wait, Sawyer and Kate or Tony and Angela? See, oh, Tony and Angela. This is the way we can do. Yeah. This is the way Lost is the Boss works. <laughs> it's beautiful. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks uh, for having me. I'm, and when we, and when we're back, we'll have two special, two other guests, <laughs> two surprise right. guests. Just give it five seconds. Oh, how can you guys hear me? Great. Yeah, it's not good. Sounds okay. good. I also noticed that I was off mic for the first three minutes, so I'm gonna have to re-record everything I said. Really? Oh, oh yeah. this isn't bad. No, it's, it's just the introduction, basically. Oh, uh, okay. You just ADR it. I'm sitting on uh, a porch. shitty ADR. <laughs> what was that? I'm sitting key? on our porch in Ocean City, and oh. while we're recording, like the HOA Citizens on Patrol car, Citizens like, like, on Patrol, the, or whatever they're Citizens called, on Neighborhood Watch. I don't know what they were doing, but they just like stopped right in front of the house. They're like, I don't know. What's they going wanted on. to know what you were doing. Wait, Why so were you you're yelling? I didn't realize you were in Ocean City t- tonight. Yes, yes, that's what I was saying. I'm in Ocean City. Congratulations. We're leaving tomorrow. To go to where? Home. Back to really? Home. You're just there for how long? We, we got here Monday. Uh, yeah. Been here all week. All right, you guys kick off the thing. I'm going to go get some beer. Uh, okay, we are back from break. That was a lovely interview we just had with Brian and Violet. But joining us now from an undisclosed location in Gotham City, it's our friend Bane. And, uh, and Bane brought his friend, Poison Ivy. Hi, guys. Yes. Hello. Nice to have you, Brian. Well, this is. Ah, I'm Bane, obviously. <laughs> this is. Quite a treat. We, uh, I've really missed Bane. I miss Bane so much. Yeah, I've been, missed you, the people. I have been excited to uh, talk to Bane ever since the beginning of the quarantine, you know, when, when we first approached him. Yeah. Uh, and now that things are loosening, I'm glad he brought a friend. Of course. It's good to bring friends at a distance. I am extremely grateful that you brought me. It's... It's good to get out of the greenhouse occasionally. Uh, I don't get to do a lot of the things I used to do anymore. You know, poison people, um, subject people to toxins, um, poison people. Mo- mostly those were the three things I did before COVID. You said poison people twice. Yeah, I, I, I did it a lot. I, it, it was <laughs> Poison. It's two scoops of poison. <laughs> yes. So I mean so that's I, poison brand. Yes, sure. that, that that cereal did terribly. That was not my best business <laughs> venture. Um, Anthropomorphic rush. sons are weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I we talked to Bane. What what did you do for the quarantine? What have you been doing? Well, you know, I've been tending to my plants. I've been growing um, a nightshade. Um, uh huh. Strychnine. Poison assassin. Uh, yeah. Um, also, um, plants that produce arsenic. Did you know that apple seeds produce arsenic? It takes I a did. lot of apple seeds to kill a man, but I'm, I'm up to the task. Um, <laughs> and also, I've been playing a lot of Overwatch. <laughs> Overwatch. You're, you wouldn't be an Animal Crossing person. You're a flora, not a fauna. Yeah, I like to get away from my day-to-day life and you know i just plant so much stuff also you know using my natural skills i've i've been just been planting a lot of weed selling a lot of weed Um, they never come back because it's poisoned but oh i I was gonna gonna say is it mind control weed no it's just a neurotoxin it's just poisonous (laughs) but question if you wanted to but i guess you wouldn't want people to smoke it how would 
what would be the best way for people to ingest weed would would you say um i think the best way to ingest weed is the best way to ingest anything really that is in brownie form (laughs) brownie form yeah um uh i made the neighborhood some neurotoxin brownies (laughs) um they did not enjoy them they it was like it was like the culinary equivalent of the brown note they just (laughs) <laughs> did not take it well so when you were handing these neighbors the brownies and there was a vapor coming off of them that had a funny color did they did they seem suspect by that or that were they were like or did you just tell them no 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 it's fancy oh they they were just uh they were just happy to have human contact <laughs> and so they were paying more attention to that um than the brownies also i was wearing very little so it was kind ah. of distracting. So, so Bane, now that the uh, quarantine is is kind of easing up, what do you got? What do you have going on? Uh, I still live in a cave with a mask. <laughs> I sometimes do go get carry out from the Olive Garden because when you're there, you're family. <laughs> uh, are you are you going with with Ivy or are you guys? We go how, Dutch. How does this work? You go Dutch. Yeah, I mostly get the vegetarian stuff. You know, isn't that cannibalism? Um, yeah, but you know, you are what you eat, so ah, mm. touche. Don't get a steak at Olive Garden. <laughs> that sounds terrible. It's not good. Bane has <laughs> broken many a server's neck for low quality meats at chain restaurants. <laughs> what well, time I get better? <laughs> when Carabas is in ashes, you have my permission to die. <laughs> Uh, what, what what is the best place to get like a chain restaurant steak? Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> there are you no know rules. <laughs> no rules. Now you must fight to the death for my amusement, <laughs> and I'll have a wallaby donned. <laughs> I just put it in my little venom thing. It's good eating. Yeah, Ivy, be, is be so be... extra. <laughs> I, I, how long have you known me? Well, um, Bane and I went to Towson together. Uh, Wait, what? Whoa. Whoa. Okay, question. Uh, we uh, thought he question. went to prison high school. Or... Oh, no, that was college. You can only get into Towson. I mean, it was the only, <laughs> it was my safety. I have got prison high school records. This is, this is breaking news that he went from uh, cave prison high school to Towson? Yeah, yeah, that's um, about right. <laughs> I majored in botany mm. with a uh, with a with a a, a minor in in neurotoxins, and <laughs> I think that Bane, what did you major in? English literature. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, English literature. I want the world to suffer as much as I have. Also, it's really when you have a degree in English literature, killing people with your hands is about all you're qualified to do. <laughs> Yeah. But you've read Ulysses. Yes, and I've understood it. <laughs> it's all about jerking off, right? Yes, of course. Uh, question. I mean, the quarantine, you guys have been, man, you've been locked in your house. What is, do you, when, when you jerk off, do you use venom or do you save that for just like fights? Oh, no, you don't put pe- venom on your penis. I'm trying oh, to do you don't? Monster. Do you I mean, Bane probably doesn't put venom on his penis, but I've put venom on many another person's penis. But you mean actual vet, like poison? <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Because I, I mean, because honestly, if I had, uh, you know, the super steroid venom, my penis is probably the first place I'd put it. It gives you, you weird balls. <laughs> clean up. Oh my god. <laughs> This is taking quite the turn. So, so you're still in the cave. Uh, when, when it comes time for quarantine to be over, over, what are you guys most looking forward to doing? Setting Gotham on fire, of course, and making people go back into their homes. It's going to be an epic dick move. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm mostly going to, like, grow some azaleas. 
Well, so you've been using the quarantine to grow poison, but once the quarantine is over, just azaleas? Yeah, yeah. I have. I'm, by then, I'm going to have more than enough poison. So oh, okay. That's what I'm going to focus on, poison and azaleas, and also this adult coloring book. <laughs> uh, have you guys... Have you guys been watching a lot of TV? What what, what shows are Bane and Poison Ivy watching during quarantine? Sh- I love Double Shot at Love. I hope Polly D and Vinny Guagagadarino can finally <laughs> find love in Las Vegas. The lady, the girls come live with them. Yes, it's horrifying. <laughs> yeah, uh, me myself. Um, I've been watching reruns of Avatar, The Last Airbender. (laughs) And also um, Tiger King. I'm team Carol Baskin. (laughs) Because I'm evil. And um, yeah, it's the tigers are mauling people. And it's just nice not to see like plants get blamed for anything. Would have thought Little Shop of Horrors. Ooh. Right, that that was our disclosure. Um, <laughs> the new documentary more. or the Michael Douglas movie? Uh, the new documentary. Okay, oh. okay, good. I thought it was going to be like the Michael Douglas movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about that would be a different movie if it had plants. Ford, the jolly green giant is pressured into sex. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm so alone. glad he's out now. You know. Out of the closet? Yeah, yeah. He's dating Swamp Thing. And, oh shit! Uh, <laughs> that is a hot have challenges. There's a size differential. But I had no idea yeah. that the Jolly mm. Green Giant was in the DCU. Oh. He loves the. He loves. The oh, he he uh, he converted for for uh, Swamp Thing. So can't Swamp Thing like absorb swamp materials and become larger and mm. and you know like become large enough? For the uh, yeah, it it takes a lot out of him though. So mm. he he mostly does that for the material that they upload to Pornhub. <laughs> um, I think the Golly Dream Giant he comes for the green, but he stays for the brown. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! We're earning our explicit rating this evening. Well, every so often <laughs> we we, we got to do it. Uh, oh, but Bowie. It, <laughs> uh guys if there's one thing you wanted to, to tell people about the upcoming you know easing of of uh of regulations for the quarantine what would that be masks are for cool tough guys like me <laughs> seriously you dicks wolf for doors in public and weren't embarrassed but you're bothered by the mask I just want to say that if an unnecessarily sexy woman wearing plants comes up to you with snacks, I just want you to remember, uh, just to take one, it's perfectly legit, nothing (laughs) bad will ever happen to you. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, this has just been truly a delight. Uh, can Can we call upon you again, Bane, Ivy? Yes, Any time you would like. Uh, well, have you have you seen any other than citizens of Gotham, or maybe it's Underbelly? Like, what 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 are other people doing? Well, I know that the Penguin is in and out of Jenny Craig these days. Uh huh. And um, I know that Killer Croc has been going to the dermatologist. Uh, I haven't kept up. Um, Joker really hasn't called me since you know he blew up. Uh, since you know uh, Joaquin Phoenix was in that documentary, and now his head's so <laughs> big. And uh, but yeah, I don't know if Bane knows where what the guys are up to these days. Uh, I run into Clayface at times. <laughs> I think he's moonlighting as one of those spa baths. <laughs> oh, he's also, getting deep. I sometimes run into Kite Man. He's okay. <laughs> He's got a kite. He's got yeah, kites. He likes kites. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, Bane, Poison Ivy. We will hope to hear from you soon. You'll hear from me when I call upon you. 
Thank you for having us. I look forward to it. First, I'll break your spirit, then your body. Oh. <laughs> it's always that one extra line, Dane. If only, if only it's always got to get that last word in. Always got to get that last word. Bane. Bane and Poison Ivy. Well, that was just lovely. All right. We will be right back with the finale, a.k.a. Shut ups. That's it. All right. I loved all, all right. of that. <laughs> you, you, that was fantastic. That's my, seen, that's my new favorite thing to do. Have you seen the t-shirt that's uh, Bane Chiropractic Associates? <laughs> no. <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, that, that is fantastic. This was so much fun. Uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us. Always a good time, man. Beautiful. We'll send out the links when they're done. Cool, cool, cool. You got yeah, it. Right. Later. Can I put my phone on the charger for five minutes? Uh, yeah, yes. Are you going to be? Or should we? Are you or be, should we just? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm going to smoke a cigarette and stuff. Uh, yeah. Let me stop recording this.